Tim here. Um, last time I talked to you a couple of days ago, we did a little intro to the to the animals that we have out here on the farm. That's the ones we brought with us from the other side of the world, feels like. But um, about an hour and a half, I guess, drive back to where we were to this spot. But um, I did mention in that video that we kind of had to push up the move a bit. Um, didn't exactly get into why. So a little bit of a background and not a whole lot. Definitely no real deep detail. Um, what we had was a half acre with an old farmhouse on it. And we fell in love with it. It was a beautiful little spot. Uh, we outgrew it really quick. But um, we were convinced we could make it work. We didn't need a whole lot. We weren't planning on building a business. We just wanted to be self-sufficient. And the place was perfect for that. It was a beautiful little home. Um, storage buildings were, <laughs> I really missed my storage building. It was amazing. Um, but at some point, the family had built a guest house, mother-in-law suite, something. Anyway, a little smaller version of the cabin right next to it. Um, in fact, it was so close that at one point they came in and re-roofed it and stretched the sidings and actually closed the three and a half, four foot gap that was between the two. They may have done it all at the same time. I don't know. Anyway, there was two several walls. It shared a roof. And the landlords, when they ran into the hiccup and realized they weren't going to be able to sell it to us, needed to utilize it. I don't blame them. It's theirs. It's income property. So they moved the family next door. So now it's a duplex. Um, wasn't bad. They were good neighbors. We got along great. Um, very, very to themselves. Uh, they loved what we were going on. The kids were awesome. Uh, they were so much fun to have around because they just fell in love with the farm. Um, they, they, they sneak over and try to feed the pigs apples and stuff. And they always acted like they were going to, you know, get in trouble for doing it or something. And we'd just laugh because we had actually showed them how to feed the pigs apples. But uh, it was a lot of fun watching them. They, they really enjoyed the experience. And we're glad we got to be a part of that and give it to them. Um, bad news in that situation is is because there was another house there um, I was at work um, I don't remember the dates it's turned into a kind of a blur to be honest with you and uh, anyway I get I get a phone call and it's my wife and the house is on fire now, it wasn't our house it wasn't our side at all but the the neighbor's apartment had caught on fire and we did share a roof Fortunately, because of the way they built it, the open ceiling didn't exist as far as the attic space being connected, so no smoke came our way. Uh, the fire department, uh, God bless them, they were amazing. They were on site within minutes, um, got it under control really quickly. Um, I don't know what did more damage to the spot, if it was the fire in the smoke or <laughs> the hole they chopped in the roof and the amount of water they flooded in to make sure it was out. But, um, but anyway, it kind of forced our hands a little bit. Um, we just, we, we made the call. Um, there's some other stuff with the house fire and the location and everything else that just, it just really got really uncomfortable fast. I had been staying out here for the most part of a month, maybe a little bit longer, almost full time. So Sarah was back there tending all the animals and taking care of everything on her own and just the emotional stress that you go through when you when you feel like you were that close to losing everything. Um, I just didn't see it as a viable situation to continue. So as much as I wanted the extra three weeks to really come in here and finish trimming this place out and getting it right, because uh, I really wanted to give it to her, you know, just turnkey. And um, <laughs> didn't quite happen. But what I'm about to show you is light years ahead of what we've actually been living in. Um, because what we did was I, I took that day off work. Of course, I rushed home, you know, telephone call, house is on fire. You go home to see what's left. Um, we started moving animals that day. And like I said, it's an hour and a half one-way drive. Some days we made three round trips. The pigs had just been born. We didn't want to move them for at least two weeks to get them kind of settled in. Because we don't do the vaccines and everything that a lot of people think you really should do. Because in our study and experience, we've learned that mom's already created most of those things. And the colostrum they develop and feed the babies within the first two weeks kind of immunizes them 
<laughs> unless you do something like we did and jerk them up and move them an hour and a half away to a completely different landscape um, leaving the forest land down there to come up to the sand hills with the pine needles and the sand and the clay and stuff they've never experienced and um anyway it was a risk that we didn't want to take and but we ended up having to take it fortunately everybody seems to be doing really well a little bit still you know the runt and she's kind of tiny but she's hanging on and doing well so it took all of that week this happened on a tuesday it took all of that week sunday i think we moved our last rabbit hutch and uh all of our furniture all of our belongings were still at the old homestead saturday of that week it was supposed to be two three inches of rain so we decided not to rent the truck and move all of our belongings mostly because we didn't know where we we're going to put them uh, y'all have seen from earlier videos the amount of tools and tables and cutting boards and portable saws and everything I had in the middle of this house. It was a giant mess, a huge construction zone. Um, that did not change on moving day. In fact, it got worse because what we did was we stuck all of our furniture and belongings into the two closets I built, piled them in corners all the way around it. I didn't have a kitchen at all. Um, it was a nightmare. Um, we did manage to get our bed off the truck and into the floor into the dining room and I'm gonna quit talking and show you a little bit about that um, it looks way better now where the table was in front of this window there was nothing um, except a mattress on the floor um, there was if you remember there was just work tables and saws and the big table saw and my press and just wood and materials and tools everywhere and it's still a mess but i promise you it, it looks like the hyatt compared to what we were living in it was horrible um i actually got a text from my mother or my wife they'd rather that says thank goodness the movie's behind you and i busted up laughing and i said take a picture from the end of the house down and show her that the move is not behind us it's all around us so it was chaotic. I really wanted to get some of it on film for you just to show you how we survived. We washed dishes in the bathtub for a week. Um, I cleaned the bathtub first. Don't look at me like that. But, uh, you know, we may do because that's what you do. You make do. So, if you can see in the dark, this is the little hovel room I've been calling home. This little bed here folds out to a really just the most uncomfortable uh, futon in the world. In fact, for the week we were moving animals, my wife and I slept on this every night. Um, granted, it does lay down into, like I said, the most uncomfortable full-size bed in the world. But um, that's where we were. Um, this was it. This was our wall. It's a curtains tacked to the wall. Hello, chickens and uh we just had furniture piled on here and then like i said it was a giant disaster so since then we've gotten a little bit of stuff taken care of not a whole lot still got a long ways to go now, as you can see looking around i've still got building materials i've still got windows boarded up where i have not had a chance to replace the glass planes that were broken when i got here um i did get our window unit installed um, that's the big beefy one that's going to take care of this house and so far it's doing a really good job I don't know if you can see outside but kind of just sticks to the wall on a table um, so we've got our cooling system um, today it has dropped down into the low 60s <laughs> my wife has drug out the little space heater so it's kicking but over here in the corner all of this is eventually going to just come back out um we're going to put the butcher block table in here still none of that has changed i'm going to finish out these windows and walls this is still getting a countertop table but we borrowed this bamboo dresser that was standing on its end in the little bedroom for a month and kind of turned it into a mini buffet just to hold some of our appliances and we've got dishes and stuff in the drawers because you know no shelves over our cabinet yet. In fact, there's a light, and there's a light, and 
There's supposed to be a hood here that's not here yet, but God bless us, we've got a stove. Sarah found a deal on a used one down the road, and it's immaculate, looks great. Um, today, our big win. We ended up going with a 30-inch base cabinet here. Uh, really wanted a 36. I had done my math wrong with the pantry wall and all here. I had neglected the all-important kitchen window. Um, guys, if you've ever done a kitchen, you know what I mean, because your wife has told you. Ladies, you already know. Kitchen sink centers the kitchen window so that when you're standing in front of it, cooking, cleaning, prepping, washing, whatever it is you do at that sink, you're looking outside because apparently you're tired of seeing your kitchen at that point. Um, and I get it. And it's pretty outside. See? Well, except for the junk because we still have a bunch of that. But anyway, as I was saying, we had to go with a 30-inch base and not a 36. The big farm style sink that we wanted was not even close to going into a 36. My wife, again, awesome internet search guru she is, she found this 28 inch drop-in kitchen sink with the vegetable rinse mat and all. And uh, I went and picked that up at Lowe's today, decided we really had to have it. Cooking boards in a way, can't really see it. But y'all, I can't stress. Enough. <laughs> How good it felt to finish dishes tonight in a sink again instead of in a bathtub. It was awesome. Um, it was so much fun, we did them together. Because <laughs> that's kind of where we're at right now in our lives. Um, and it's a blast. Every minute it's just so much fun. God is good and we're just... You gotta love every moment of it even the crazy stuff you really do you gotta love it but uh i don't even know where to begin we have been so long since we have walked this room i've still got so much to do i feel like i'm talking in circles so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna come to the end down here in the dark again i'm gonna give you a point because a lot of you have been asking what does it look like now or where you're at so this is it we're utilizing the closets that I have not painted the back wall on yet or built doors or trim or frame underneath the roof that is still not trimmed next to the walls that are still not trimmed next to a TV stand that still does not have a TV <laughs> and we've got junk everywhere but um we can sit down now have a conversation and we're not on five gallon buckets on the side of the world's most uncomfortable futon and i've still got to replace that door rebuild that whole jam i've got to put a wall here beside the refrigerator they hadn't made it yet but it's coming but we have a refrigerator we have a stove we have a table to sit at the chicken has joined us he's not real by the way he's metal um tractor supply 30 bucks at christmas this is a good buy so our spice shelf is currently our mini pantry our little spice chair, our mini mini pantry. Um, our pantry, still too dark to see in there. One of these days I'm gonna film that when the lights are on. Laundry room, we have a working washer and dryer. You can't see it, so I'm gonna move that on. And in uh, the bedroom, I don't have doors on my closet, but I'm blessed. I have clothes in my closet. My wife has even more clothes in her closet because she is more blessed, but no door. We found this gym, which is not looking great in this photo because I got it covered with stuff. This is, I'm guessing, based on what the guy at the antique store told me, roughly a 150-year-old dresser. We are going to convert it into our bathroom vanity um, with a vessel sink. We don't have it yet because we haven't decided if we want white to match the tub or if we want one that really pretty glass one that my wife's phoning all over with the hand printed flowers. She's going to get what she wants. You know this, right? Um, toilets installed. Nothing else is going on in here yet. But to give you an idea what it's going to look like, I did manage to get half the room trimmed. Um, that was kind of important to me 
before we actually brought the bed into this room. My wife did all the overhead painting and finished all of this um, so that I could get in here and build the bed. Um, the reason I say build the bed, and I really wish I could have showed you how we did this. You've probably seen it. It's all over YouTube. We're not the first people in the world to build a pallet bed. But this bed is integrated locking pallets. Um, this thing right here, oddly enough, they all just look like they're turning the same. Oh, we did something a little bit different though. When I got to the top of the top layer, we split a couple of pallets, had them meet in the middle a long way so that we have floating end tables by the bed. <laughs> we did not consider when we designed this in our little heads that our mattress is 16 inches thick. So our little end tables got quite a drop. But we utilized an old bamboo dressing rack that we've been hauling around since Florida. It actually fit perfectly between these windows. Um, the trim is up on the windows and the floor as well. Everywhere that I didn't need to move this bed again. Because once assembled, this thing weighs several, several hundred pounds. And uh, yeah, that's... um. We're living here now. So everything that we didn't want to do, which was move into the house unfinished so that we could really focus on outside and getting the farm up and going. Um, all those ideas, all those plans we had just came to a screeching halt with a simple phone call that said, Tim, our house is on fire. And uh, the panic that ensued and the decisions that had to made be right on top of it. Um, just turned everything upside down as far as our plans. But, um, you know, none of that really matters. We're here. We love it. It's a lot harder getting anything done when you're trying to live in the middle of it. Um, I'm not getting to do videos as much. I'm not getting to work as much. Um, at least not here. Um, the daily grind is just kind of you know starts taking precedence our biggest fear is that we kind of get in a rut and get stuck and staying like this i'm not gonna let that happen um, we're gonna keep on pressing um, so over the weekend we're gonna get a bunch of this done and i'll shoot you another video and let you know how we're going from there and we'll stay in touch until then till i'm out